The Splatfests will be handled differently in Splatoon 3 than ever before, though it still draws many similarities to the previous two games in the franchise. We'll go over exactly how Splatfests will work in Splatoon 3 here, right now. You can divide it almost into three phases. So let's start with the first one. There's actually stuff for you to do while we're in what's called the sneak peek part of the Splatfest in Splatoon 3. You'll cast your vote for whichever of the three teams that you want to vote for first. We can use the upcoming example if you want of Team Rock, Team Paper, or Team Scissors. You'll pick one of those teams and then you're committed to it. So make sure it's the one that you really do want to join. And then you'll get a Splatfest T, and that'll always have the ability doubler for the primary ability slot. So we'll actually do a bit more after this. Before the first actual match of Splatfest begins, you'll want to raise what's called your catalog level by battling and working shifts so that you can collect conch shells. The conch shells collected by every player on your team during the sneak peek will have an impact on the final score results. So help out a team even if you can't play during the Splatfest event duration itself. We'll also go over how the Splatfest is scored more towards the end of this video here. I suppose before we move to the next phase, I should just say, for anyone who doesn't know, we mentioned the catalog level earlier. So your catalog is gotten at the general store in the beginning of the game, and when you just play in matches, do achievements, and when you do job shifts, I believe that's Salmon Run, you get catalog points. The catalog gets you items in the game, but seemingly it'll help you in the Splatfest sneak peek period as well. But okay, now, when the Splatfest's actual main event begins, there's a first half and second half. So we'll try to quickly talk about the first half, but it'll probably be most familiar to anyone who played the previous Splatoon games. This is the phase of Splatfests where you play in what's called an open or pro Splatfest battle. Both are 4v4 turf war matches, but open battles can be solo or the one to select if you want to group up with friends. Oddly enough, you have to either group up with one friend to make it a duo or three friends to make four, you know, like so basically two or four is your group. The pro battle is basically a solo experience that puts you with three other strangers for your turf war team, but it's a bit more competitive for ranking up and down in Splatfest power. You can pause and read this little website blurb if you want to know even more about what that entails. You probably just want to know that open battles allow for friends to join up, but also that you could play opponents of any ranking power in the Splatfests when you're in open mode, whereas pro battles are only solo, and you'll get matched more closely to opposing players that have similar ranking power. There's also going to be 10 times, 100 times, or even 333 times battles, so so you'll get a multiplier of any of those numbers that are applicable for winning that match if you get to play one. This is where you apparently want to have those conch shells from before because you could have a 100x multiplier on your turf war match, which is just awesome of course for earning more per capita with your time spent playing. Wins and losses and just inking turf in general gets you clout, which will be one of the factors that help your Splatfest team win in the end. Again, we'll talk about that in the scoring. In Splatoon 3 now though, we will see a second half of the Splatfest main event. Every player is going to get the halftime report, and then we'll all play the second half. That basically starts when there's only 24 hours remaining in the Splatfest overall. So the halftime report is going to tell us all which team has the most clout so far, basically the most points in matches overall from the first half of the Splatfest. And so then we'll all be playing the new tricolor battle where the second and third place teams will each have two players. They'll go up against the first place team, which has four players. I haven't quite fully gotten what that is yet, except for I think basically the reason for this is because in a tricolor turf war, you can think of second and third place almost like allies, but not quite. It's like the enemy of my enemy is an ally kind of deal, where they'll be trying to just bring first place team down a pig. The teams are all still trying to just ink the largest area within three minutes like a turf war, but of course, if you saw the direct and you read the website, it does seem that the teams will really want to get what's called the ultra signal, and that's I guess going to be in the center of the stage, so you really try to get that if you want to win. The ultra signal basically summons a member of deep cut, presumably I'd imagine it's the idol team team leader for your specific team when you get it, and they will then put down the Sprinkler of Doom. Your team is also going to get clout, basically points, for getting that ultra signal. And hey, that Sprinkler of Doom seems to rain down your team's ink color all over the place. That's just obviously going to make it easier to win the turf war in general. So basically the point is, go for that ultra signal every time. Don't hold back, as they say. So alright, we'll try to be as quick as we can here in explaining how the final results are tallied up. Basically, teams will get points based on four different categories categories listed right here. It's going to be total votes for the team. So like the most popular team basically gets plus 10. The most conch shells collected during the sneak peek phase, that team gets a plus 10. Individual clout from the Splatfest battles if you play in open, but also this includes the clout from tricolor turf wars. That team is going to get plus 15 points. And finally, the individual clout gained in Splatfest pro battles. The team with players that have the most clout there gets 10 points. This basically means the highest a Splatfest team can get 
get if they were going to shut out the other two teams is a total of 45 points in the end. I think in the past it was done similarly, but they usually seem to do it as like a percentage and whatnot. Basically, just try to do as much as you can once the Splatfest begins, even before the main event. And when you're in those tricolor battles, get those ultra signals. Definitely. So if you want to know any more with a deeper dive on stuff revealed in the direct or otherwise, please, you guys, just let me know in the comments. Click an end screen, join our Discord for playing Splatoon 3 together, and thanks for viewing.